hello! In this video, I want to show you a new course platform that has come out, which is simple to use, but very, very powerful. And it could be great for you if you are a creative that is selling courses and you would want a platform that has a one-time fee, or if you're thinking about uh, selling courses and you're looking for a platform that you can use with ease and that has built-in cart system. So I'll be giving you a first look on this new course platform today. Hi, my name is Natalie and I help creative entrepreneurs create awesome content that leads to fabulous products and services. I do this by teaching you strategy and tech so that you have everything that you need to be successful in your business. So today I want to talk to you about Learn. Learn is a new course platform by ThriveCard and it's all about courses and being able to sell your courses with ease and make it look good. ThriveCard, if you don't know, is a card platform giving you options to sell your courses, but also products or services with ease and having it look good and work perfectly. Um, no matter your currency, no matter whether you need to add taxes, it'll all work. So today I want to show you a first look of this new platform Learn and their upgraded fairs version Learn Plus. And um, yeah, let's jump in. Okay, so we are looking at Learn. And Learn is the course platform from ThriveCard. So you can see now I have ThriveCard with Learn Plus. Uh, I will talk a little bit about that soon. And um, this is the tab where you can find Learn. And if you log in first time, of course, you won't see anything yet, um, but you have the option to make a project. So we are making a new project, which we are calling YouTube video. And in this project, you can make multiple courses if you want. Um, so we are making YouTube video course number one. And we will have a description here. You can add a author, um, which I'm going to set to my business name. And then you can make a, a course logo for this. Um, you can see in the background that I have um, two images here for the other courses. And um, they uh, recommend a size 1280 by 960. So um, I just went to Canva and made a image and I will be adding of them here um, for one of my actual products uh, products so that um, it's an actual image I already had and I just resized it so it's uh, perfect for here and I say create a course um, once you are in here you have the option to create create modules and lessons and um, a module can have multiple lessons um, in it or just one lesson. So module one, and then you have the option to show it to all students or just uh, specific tags. We will get back to the specific tags later on, but you can show it only to certain people if you want to, but we're showing it to all students and then creating this module. So now we can drag in a lesson and sometimes it does this. I don't know what that is. It kind of gets confused. There it is. We've added a lesson and we can say lesson one. And again, we have the option to send, show it to all students or to specific tags. And then if we go into a lesson, we have several options to actually make it look good. Okay, so when you've done nothing yet, this is how your um, course is going to look. This is the um, uh, course name. This is the image that we added. This is the um, um, course progress of your course that you're in. This is module one and lesson one. Um, but we can style everything that we want. So let's start here. We can style the header and the sidebar. Um, so you can change the sidebar width if you want to. So I'm going to set it to 20. 
We can change the color if we want to. So we're going to set it to green. Um, and then we can say that we either want, do you want to show progress or we don't want to show progress. Um, if you have a, a product that you want to add in here, but it won't have a lot of um, lessons because they're not actually lessons, it's just your product. Um, you could just remove the course process progress. And we're going to also uh, change the color of the bar. And then we have um, the navigation here, so we can change the top header. And we're going to make that green as well. Maybe a little bit darker. So you have the option to um, add colors as you um, type them in here. So you have the option to add hex, and then they will show up here. You can um, just pick a color from what you have already um, selected before, and you can just drag anything that you want as well. So you have multiple options to decide um, on what you want, um, on how you want to pick a color. So then we have the navigation bar button, which is this, and we're just going to make that white. Um, you have the course title, which is here. We're going to make that white as well. You have the module uh, title, which is this one, and we're going to make that 3E3O. Um, we're going to do the lesson title in the same gray. And then we have the highlight, which is the, uh, the border around here, so we're going to set that to orange, and it's the dot as well. And then we have tabs, which is the color of um, the background here. We're going to set it to white. And then you have the tab radius, which is this, um, the border here. And we're going to set that to, to M to make it really circular. So that's things we can do here to make it look good and have um, more options to, um, yeah. Uh, style it. And then we have options within the actual um, lesson itself. So we can set the color of the lesson and now we can add all these different elements. Um, so I'm just going to go through all of them with you um, one by one. Well, I think the header is kind of clear and we can set the header uh, font size. So we're going to set that to, let's say, 40. Um, you can say what the color should be. We're picking the 3E again. And you can pick a font, and there's a lot of fonts in here. Um, so I am going for Nanito. There it is. And then we can type in our header. Um, and you also have the options everywhere to add just your padding. So you can add in the padding here or here. Um, and adjust the spacing, so you can adjust the spacing as well. Now we have the option to add text, um, which is kind of... Uh, um, yeah, just regular text. <laughs> um, but you can add text um, here, I just copied it a little bit. And then you have the option to add an image uh, above it, or besides it, or on the other uh, on the right. Um, so we are right now just going for a regular text, and we're uh, saying that that should be Nido too. And the one thing I um, noticed that it doesn't work, which I would love to have work, is if I click. Um, the letter of my font that it actually goes to that letter because that will help especially if you have something that's um, more more down the list so if you're not a b font size uh, font looking for an a or b font type okay so we're setting the font size um, i actually think that something like 18 is good and we can set the line height and i'm going for 1.7 um, you can do letter spacing as well, which for me, for normal text, I wouldn't do. Um, you can set the color, which we're setting to our 3E again. 
And then you have the option to display a content box around it. Um, and we'll get back to that a little bit later on as well. And you could set um, a content color and then add transparency to that. So a lot, a lot of options. So maybe we want to say a little bit of spacing on the top before the header. Um, I think, by the way, that because of copy the text that it's showing a bit of gray. Um, but normally, if you would type it, there shouldn't be any problem. So, um, hey, so oh no, no, that's just that was just because I was editing it because now it's gone. Okay, so heading texts, uh, we can add an image in here and then just pick something that we already have, or we can upload an image as well. Um, and then we have the option to maybe do two side by side, or we can adjust the spacing. If we want to make it smaller and give it some spacing on the top and the bottom. And you can also just change the image size if it's not about padding, but more just how big it's looking. You can align it. And so now you can see that we have a um, padding here so that it's not coming completely to the side. You can add a video in if you want to. Again, you have multiple options here with a video with text beside it or beneath it or having two or three videos in a row. And then um, you can enter your embed code. So, so if you are familiar with other course platforms, most of those offer video hosting within the platform, but that can be really, really expensive because they have to host all these videos and pay for that space. So one of the reasons this product can be um, a one-time fee only right now, or even free, depending on whether you want Learn or Learn Plus, is because they don't host video in here. And um, you can just use YouTube or Loom or Vimeo or any of the other um, video platforms that are out there um, to upload your videos to there and then embed them. So I will be adding a a video from my YouTube channel just to show you um, how it will look. Okay, so I am getting a embed code from YouTube. I'm adding that here into uh, embed your video just so you can see. And then you have the option to uh, resize it how you want it. So let's say we want it big. And then it looks like this. Um, what I have heard is that if you embed Loom videos, it does work, but it's not showing the preview um, in here. I haven't tried that myself, but that's something I've heard. So if you would add Loom videos, which would be a great option, by the way, to host uh, videos that you don't want to show um, any. So if it's just for a course, it could be a great option. Um, but it could be that you're not seeing it here, but it's still showing up in the end. Okay, so we've done heading, text, image, and video so far, uh, but there's quite a few more options. You can add a bullet list. Um, I'm just saying this one, this two, list three, etc. cetera. Uh, you can also make it a double list, which I think is great um, if there's more that you wanna add. Um, something that I would prefer if would be added as well is that you can type it at once and then it just splits into um, two lists. Uh, again, you could set um, the font size, the font type, um, the padding, the spacing. Um, you can also do, which I kind of skipped the other times, is you can do text casing. So it can be automatic, which is just... Um, regular, and then you have uppercase, lowercase, and capitalize. So if for any reason you want everything to be uppercase, you could do that as well. By setting the text color, and then you have style. So with lists, you can do numbered, you can do pointer, uh, you can do brackets, you can do checkboxes. Um, in several ways, you can do circles, you can do stars, um, squares, um, arrows. Um, I love this, by the way. I think this is really cute. The only thing I would love to add is then be able to um, change the color of the arrows or the 
whatever I'm doing um, separately from the text. So maybe in doing the stars uh, pink while the rest stays uh, the gray. Um, you also have the option to add dividers, which you can drag. You can just drag in, and then you can set the size, just the width of the um, uh, of the divider. You can pick whether uh, what the look is of it. You can pick the color, of course, um, and you can again look at spacing. So that it becomes more spacious in your um, course. Then we have FAQs, and to, for me, this was a really cool one. Um, I, it took me a second to understand how it was working, but when I found uh, out, it was really cool. So, okay, um, right now it says question here, and then it's an answer here, which makes sense, um, but it's a drop down, and you just see one question and one answer. You can um, do a lot here, but let's do set up FAQs first so that you can see how it works. So we would have question one. And I'm just going to copy a few of the cupcake lorem ipsum so that we have um, options in here. Question two, oh, two. So you can just add a question and then Add as many as you want. And then when you're ready, click save. Okay, so now you can see what's happening. So the style is joined together, so they're looking like this. And if we click on one of them, it opens. And then if you click another one, the first closes again. You can also do separate, which works the same way. It will open only one of them, um, but there's a little bit of white spacing in between them. So that's something you can um, pick. Then there's the background color, which we're just for now keeping to gray. You can set the border radius, which is the way it looks here, um, which to me, it makes more sense to keep like a really small rounded corner. Um, you can pick where it says it has the the bullet uh, point position, which is the arrows, um, and then you can pick the color of those. You can pick the question color, and then you can add in the answer color. And I've lost my three D. Um, so that's how an FAQ works. Um, what I do miss here, I'm wondering if it's in here, no, it's not in here, is that I can't set the fonts uh, or the font size for it. Um, you have an HTML option, which is if you, for instance, want to embed like a form, um, a Google form or a, um, yeah, some kind of form in here, you could just um, add in the HTML code. There's a lot of other things where you have HTML code as well that you can just add in and um, be done with that. And then there's the content box, which um, we kind of talked a little bit about in when we were talking text or we showed that it was there. Um, the content box is just a content box. So you put other things in here. I'm going to show you what it what I mean. You can set the width. So let's say it's going to be 75%. Um, you can set the color. Do you think a light gray might be good? Um, you can give it a transparency or even use an image. Um, you can give it a border radius. Um, and a border size. And you can set the color of that border. And then you can pick um, the line. Okay, so now you have this. So what can you do with that? Well, you can add in other elements to that uh, box. So you can just add in a header to the box. 
and then and in a text as well. So if you want to highlight something for whatever reason, you can just add it in, in here and it gives you even more possibility possibilities with how to style it. Which I thought was a really cool feature when I figured out what it was meant for <laughs> and I could use it. Um, and then we have the columns, um, which is the same as in you add things in here, but you have the option to add several columns to your um, course if you need that for anything. And, um, and then we have, last but not least, we can add a button. I'm going to add it in here, um, which we can um, either be a button or we can have it be an image that is a button. And then you can um, enter the link to where it leads to. Um, you can set the font, you can set the size, you can all these things that you can do normally to a button. Um, like a regular button. Okay, so these are all elements to building a course. Um, there will be a quiz option coming soon, which is not available just yet. And then once we have it set, we can either save it as a draft or publish it. I'll set it as a draft because I want to show you some stuff. And we get back to our module. Um, now, I could just drag in another lesson and do it that way, but then I have to set all the uh, styling again, but I can also just clone the lesson and now I have lesson two, which right now looks exactly the same. Um, but I can just edit the text or anything and then um, I don't have to reset all the styling. So that makes it easier to do things. Um, then there's the option of um, publishing. So I can just publish one specific uh, lesson and say, okay, I want to publish and then save it. And this lesson will be available instantly. And we can just click save. And now one is uh, published and the other one isn't. I can also say that the um, module will be published and then um, it will save um, the module uh, to be shown. So if you publish a lesson, it automatically publishes the module. Um, if I will set them back, just so I can show you. If I have all of them at draft and I would click publish, it would just keep these to um, a draft. So it's if you um, make a lesson a published, then it will also make the module published. But as long as um, these are not published, they won't show up. Okay, so. Um, when we go back to this, you also have the option to change access timing and it gives you the option to make it instant or dripped. And you have that option for the full course as well. So we have instant or dripped. Um, I don't use dripped at all at the moment, but I do think it's awesome that you have multiple options here. Most uh, course platforms, when they do drip, they have one option where you say, okay, I want it dripped every day or every week, and that's it. Here we have a few different options. We have time period, which is where you say that it drips out a module or a lesson every day, week, month, year. Um, you have also day of the month, so that you say that it drips out a module or a lesson every 14th, for instance, um, which can be really cool um, to have uh, contents uh, especially for something like a membership and you can work ahead, but it will only show um, the content for the next month. Um, a specific calendar date. So you can say drip out modules on specific dates and then, um, or lessons, sorry. Um, and then you have um, after a trial or rebuild, which means um, the content will be unlocked after a rebuild. So for instance, if you have something that's rebuilt every month for um, uh, um, six months, then you can say that it drips out one module 
every time uh, there's a rebuild. Or you can say, okay, you have a trial of a week, and then after that they get um, access to the rest. So that for the trial, they will only get access to the first module, and then the rest is unlocked when the trial period ends. So you have multiple options for dripping out content. I'm going to set it back to instant just for easy um, showing you all, everything. Okay, so all of this is actually um, in Learn. So that's the uh, version you get right now if you have or buy the Thrivecar. And now I'm going to show you a few features that are in Learn Plus, which is, first of all, um, create advanced sequences. And that is something so cool um, that it took me a while to figure out um, all the things that you could do with this. And um, I think there's still more than we can um, come up with when it comes to opportunities for this. Um, so what am I talking about? So you can set up course rules. And there's you can add as many as you want. Um, and there's two parts to a course rule. You have the trigger and then you have what you want to have. So let's first look at triggers. So you can say if someone uses a coupon, so um, they have a coupon from another course or they have a coupon from um, having credit with you or a coupon from um, just a sale that you had. Um, so if they use a coupons, you want something to happen. If they buy through an affiliate, you can set it to be a specific affiliate or just all of your affiliates. If people buy within a certain date range, which can be an amazing way for pre-launch as where you want to add a specific bonus, you can say if people buy within a specific date range. If they are a repeat customer, so they don't have just one thing where they've been bought multiple things from you, you want something special to happen. If they live in a certain part of the world, you want something to happen. Or if they complete a module or lesson. So we are going to start with if they complete a module or lesson. So if they complete a module, which is module one, we want something to happen. Now you can e either say that it's, um, you can even say that it's a, a, a combined rule. So they need to complete module one and have a certain um, coupon or affiliate or whatever. So you, or you can have it be an or. So if they complete a module or they're from ABC, you can make it as difficult if you as you want to. So. Once we have this, we can choose an action. And there's a few actions. You can give an extra course. So let's say, okay, so you buy with a certain coupon. So you're not just getting course A, you're also getting course B. Um, you can remove a, a, a course. I haven't figured out when I want to use it, but I do think it's awesome that it's in here because you might at some point think of something where you're like, oh, but if they do this, then they don't need access to that course anymore. And then it's good that it's an option. Uh, you can apply a tag. We are getting back to the tags in a bit, but you can say, for instance, if they buy from an affiliate, I want them to have the tag um, affiliate referral. And then we will get back to that in a little bit. You can have it unlock all content. So, okay, this course is going to be dripped. Um, there's going to be courses or uh, modules um, dripped out every month. But if you buy within a certain uh, time frame, then all content is unlocked immediately. Or if they buy with a certain coupon, then all content is unlocked immediately. Um, or from a certain affiliate. So you can do that. And this one is really awesome as well. You can give people an award for finishing a module. You can also remove tags, which will be coming soon, by the way. So we are going to give an award for people who are finishing the first module. Um, you can display an, an image, you can display a button, and you can add text. So and we are going to make that bold and underlined. And we're going to display an image. Uh, which is just, I'm just picking a random image. And you can also even have a button where 
oh, you've finished module one, um, click here for uh, an extra bonus or whatever you want. So confirm, save, and now if a student completes module one, they get a reward. This sequence thing is so, so powerful. And I don't think I've ever seen a course platform that has this many options and all within the same platform. So no more zaps or um, tags within ConvertKit to be able to see what's happening. You can just do it from within the actual um, course. Okay, so before we were talking about tags, tags are a label that you can give to certain people that do certain things so that you can make other things happen. So let's say we have a second module and this module isn't available to just anyone. It's only available to people with specific tags. So you can have the tag affiliates Sales, so you're coming from um, someone who, um, you're coming from one of my affiliates, or you have a tag uh, module one, which means you finished module one, and then you have access to this as well. So we're dragging in a lesson just for sake of it. And then it automatically says, do you want this to be also available just for this specific tags? Which yes, we want that. And now we can say we are creating an advanced sequence where if they buy, if they complete a module, no, if they buy through an affiliate course, any affiliate, then we want to apply a tag. And then we want the tag to be affiliate sale. So if they purchase through an affiliate, they get a tag affiliate sale. And now if they have that tag, module two will appear as well. The other option is if a student completes module one, we give them an award and we're applying a tag module one, which means that if they have finished module one, they automatically get module two as well. So now we're not just dripping content, no matter whether they are engaging with it or not. We're going specifically to give people access to certain modules if they've engaged with the previous module. Once you're almost ready to uh, launch, we can go to course options and then it says course recap. This is the name by whom you can add a description. We can change all of this. We've added it, of course, but we can change all of it. Um, and then, did you know to sell this course? Um, you can create a product in your products list. And we will do this in a second as well. This is a custom domain, um, which is only available in Learn Plus again, which means I can set a custom domain and then have a specific name um, for this course um, where you log in. Um, I already saw that someone asks, okay, so if I set up a um, custom domain for each of my courses, does that mean that if um, my customers log in, they have to log into that specific course to be able to see that course, which means they would need to log into each domain separately to be able to see the courses, but that's not true. If they log in through one of the custom domains, uh, names, then they will see all courses that they have access to. So I think that's a really good uh, thing because otherwise it would get really tedious to have custom domains for your customers. Okay, so other things that are awesome that are in here is if a subscription payment to access the course fails, what do you want to do? So if you have a payment plan or you have a subscription and the payment fails, what do you want to do? So you can say you want to pause stripping new content until payment is made. So they have access to the old content, but not to anything new. Or you can say, I want to disable all access until payment is made. And you have the option to advertise a course as well. 
when they log in and you can just say display this course to students of my other courses. And then you can add the sales page or card page for this course so that they can see it. You also have behavior rules, which means add rule. And then you can say when a student gets access to this course or a new module com com becomes available for this uh, student or a new lesson can becomes available or they complete a module or lesson or the student gets paused or um, the payment is disabled or well, their access is disabled or they get resumed or reactivated or enrolled. Each of these um, you can use, um, you can use, well, in my case, convert kids and add them to an existing tag or sequence and have something happen. So once we've done all of that, we can save and exit. And here is our course. Like I said, you can have multiple um, courses within your um, project so that you can keep easy uh, overview over your different courses. And you can just drag them as well. So let's say we want the second course. We can just add it into the YouTube video and now we have two courses in here. Then we have a few more options here. We have uh, my bundles where you can create a bundle and you can give it a bundle name and then pick which um, courses you want available in your bundle and create a bundle. And to sell this bundle, you can either select an eventual course or your new bundle from inside the products fulfillment settings. So um, that's my bundle right now. And then we have the option, my students, where you can see all students, of course, it's still completely empty. You can search for them. You can search for uh, students that have access to a specific course or that have access to no courses at all. You can see students that are paused or disabled or um, active. All of that, you can just sort and um, go through it. There's also the option to import students, which comes with Learn Plus as well. And then there's um, the access for your team. Um, and you can add people in here and give them access to certain parts of your account. I am not showing that because it will show some private information. Um, but you have that option as well. Okay, so if you want to sell a course, you don't need to go through any hoops and zaps and whatever to have another card pl platform and um, sell it, you can just do it from Thrivecart, which is why this combination for me is so awesome. Uh, so if we go to products and then in product, we can give this a name. Um, we could even add a label. Um, I'm not showing you the whole uh, Thrivecart setup. I just want to show you what it would mean for the Learn platform. So I will show you the fulfillment. So you will set your uh, support email here. And then you can say what should happen after purchase. And you say, add them to my membership. And it says, okay, you have Thrivecart Learn. Um, they will be added here and then you can pick which course they will be added to or you can pick the bundle that we just created. And um, what you can, you can even add a, uh, auto apply specific tags if you want to. And then you also have the option to send people to a custom success page after accessing their course. Um, Sorry, not after, before accessing their course. So um, after they've bought it, they will go to a custom success page where you could maybe say, hey, you are interested in this. Maybe you are also interested in buying this other thing. Um, and then the rest is normal Thrivecard, which I want to talk about in this video. If you would want to see a video about Thrivecard itself, please let me know in the comments and I would love to make a video about it as well. So... That is a first look of Learn and Learn Plus from Thrivecart, a new course platform which is free um, with Thrivecart. And I will leave 
my information about Thrivecart and getting Learn or Learn Plus in the description below. Thrivecart for me is a great platform to use. I have used quite a few other platforms to sell my products and courses. And um, the problem was that I could never just sell everything. So with Thrivecart, I can sell my services, which I do use Zaps for to um, get everything started. Uh, but I can sell my products, I can sell courses, um, which will now be even easier to use. Um, and I can have affiliates as well. So it's such a good all-in-one platform without becoming too overwhelming or too complicated. And it's only a one-time fee. So I don't have to worry about keeping payment on um, several card systems that do part of it and then having to pay them every year or even every month. And um, yeah, that for me is, it. this is so much easier to use and to have everything together and to just know that it's all going to work and work with ease and it's all going to look good, which is very important as well. So I will be moving over to Learn Plus myself somewhere in the next few months, um, which means I don't have to pay for uh, my current um, course platform anymore, which is already quite a cheap platform uh, in comparison to a lot of cor course platforms out there. But this for me, because I bought the Learn Plus, was only a one-time fee of $195, um, which is even cheaper than I pay in a year for um, my current um, course platform. And most course platforms are a lot more a year than um, 195 and you pay every, well, most of them you pay every month and for a lot of them you pay 50, 80 dollars a month for a course platform like this. So there are still a few things that are missing from here um, and some things will never be added or well, they said that it will probably never be added um, like um, hosting videos because that's such a heavy item on uh, the hosting. But I don't think that's a really big issue if you are making a course and you want to have a simple um, but very powerful course platform because we have options like YouTube and Loom and Vimeo which are great at um, hosting videos. While we, and with me, I mean, me and my friends, we, something we have been looking for is something to host audio because that's not an option in here as well. And we haven't found anything that's great at doing that, um, which is important to be able to offer as well to uh, people that want to listen to you. So um, that's something to um, keep in mind when you're making your choice for a course platform. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you loved seeing this first look of Learn and Learn Plus. If you have any questions about Learn, please drop them down below. I would love to help you. If you are interested in Thriveguard and Learn, I have the link in the description to get it. And yes, that is an affiliate link, which means you are not paying a dime extra, but I am getting paid a little bit commission for telling you about it and showing you about it. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video <laughs> um, and leave a comment on what you would love to see on this channel as well. I love to chat with you and I am here to respond to any comment that you leave. You might also be interested in this video over here and there's a, quite a few more videos on my channel that you could watch. See you next week.